How's it going, everybody? My name is Chris Lodondo, and you're listening to PBR Podcast. <laughs> What's well, up? <laughs> I like the great. subtleness, it's though. Great. I kind of like doing enjoy it. It's great. Hit it! What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Bolano, Derek D., Dennis the Intern, and our very special guest we've been trying to get on the show for a long time, Mr. Chris Lodondo. What's, What's up, pal? How's How going are you? How are you? Thank you for coming down. Thanks for having It wasn't a bad ride, right? No. We, uh... I live in Staten Island, so it was just under an hour. But you know how I knew that I got actually I landed here. My GPS didn't tell me. When I was pulling up to which I thought was the address. There was a car right in front of me, and the license plate said "Check out Cop My Styles at DerekD.com." <laughs> I was like, "I'm here." <laughs> it's funny because I was late. I, I had a softball game, hence my sweaty <laughs> attire. And uh, I pulled up, and I saw the minivan out in the driveway. And I was like, "Please tell me that's Ladondo's minivan." <laughs> I thought it was yours too for a second because Dennis drives a Saab. I think. Usually, no, this does usually drive a sob, but I've egged it multiple times. Uh, <laughs> so. He had to borrow mom's uh, minivan today. Yeah, <laughs> Ladonna, it's hard to get you a uh, like locked down to get on the podcast, man. It's like who you, you got to call the producer's producer, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, I mean, um, it's what's usually up? the no one, <laughs> right? <laughs> you're, you're too busy lunch break periscoping. I uh, know it's. Uh, I'm just busy with work. Uh, you know, I work in Manhattan, my day job, and my commute is the worst in the world. Uh, <laughs> it's four hours a day of commuting, so two hours to get and two hours to get back home. Do you drive? No. Nope. I take uh, the Staten I drive to the train station, which is about a mile away from my house, jump on the Staten Island train, take it to the Staten Island ferry, take the ferry across the harbor to the number one train to 59th Street, oh, Columbus Circle. It's on. an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, wow, it sucks. That's long to my, my it's commute. miserable. Yeah, yeah you, you, what do you, you take the train from... I drive to Long Ranch, and then I take that directly into Penn Station and walk three blocks. Yeah, a lot of people that actually live in New Jersey have a better commute than I do. Yeah. I live in New York City. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, let, let's be... You don't no, 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 hold on. You don't oh, wait, you even wait, go wait, there. You don't wait, live in New York there. City. You don't know. Nobody He's in one of the table. boroughs. It's if there's five boroughs in the city. I pay the city taxes. I got NYPD that patrols my streets, FDNY, sanitation, same mayor, all that shit. You guys can't say that. I, I mean, you guys are Jersey people. Yeah. Thank God. <laughs> he's technically, yeah, he's right. I'm yeah. New York City. Yeah. You're, you're talking about yeah, Manhattan. You're New York. Yeah. Well, New York you're City. You're not New York City. New York City New York does York not have five boroughs. Yes, it does. The city of, oh, you're right, it does. Well, yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn, Come on. Bronx. It wasn't even 60%. <laughs> I know. My yeah. fault. Can you name them? Yeah. Brooklyn, yeah. Bronx, Queens, Queen Staten, Staten, from, from the, the battery, top, to the top, of Manhattan. top of Manhatan. Asians, Middle Easterns, and Whatever, Latins, and Latins, blacks, whites. Let's all make it happen. Right. Okay. I didn't know that whole rhyming scheme, but hey, there you go. Nice. So he knows it. He's, yeah. Oh, you're 100% so. on that one. But I grown to uh, have a, a big appreciation for New Jersey, particularly this area. So. There you go. Yeah, we bumped into you. We were actually when we were doing street styles, we bumped into you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got interviewed. I got accosted. And you asked De Derek <laughs> if he was Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I knew it was. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that was funny. Are you Dennis the intern? You can see that on our YouTube channel. That's right. YouTube.com slash Pizza Beer Revolution. Yeah. yeah, I had like a half of a lentil burger hanging out of my mouth. Lentil <laughs> a burger. Lentil burger. Yes. Now so like when you're like walking through a park, mm -hmm. you're just like, why is everybody walking on my lunch? <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, uh, we sometimes we let him sit in, right? You know what I mean. I was hoping he wouldn't be here so I can just yell, Dennis. You can, you can still yell it. <laughs> you can still yell it. <laughs> Why, when everybody sits in and yells his name, they all go, Dennis? Like, yeah. That's not I'm, how Because I'm here. Dennis. <laughs> right. yeah. He's like down this like mysterious hallway in this huge studio, you know? <laughs> right? Like I don't know. Yeah, people they like they like uh, just mutter it because <laughs> the guests don't know how little I'm paying attention. <laughs> So, Ladondo, you're you're a pretty uh, well-rounded dude, man. Yeah. We met a long time ago, and unbeknownst to us, I was filming you. Yeah, uh, I don't... We were on a pilot shoot. Um, I believe it was for the Spike TV pilot that the jo uh, in Tenderloins had. No, I don't think... Well... With the b black boobs, and you were the doctor. That was... Right? That was you? That he, wasn't Spike TV, you right? You sure? Yeah, no. I did the Spike TV one, but I... I'm pretty sure that was for Spike. We back up no, a second. Yeah, you had yeah, black yeah. boobs. No, no Sal well, did. Oh, okay. Which you'll never see that. That was hysterical. It's hysterical. It was so funny. Ba basically, it was uh, the impractical Joker. In joke. Sorry, the tenderloins. Right. Uh, we're shooting a pilot, um, and I'll sixty percent this because it was so long ago. But it was in. A, it was about the four of them in their day jobs, and then they they just stumbled. The storylines all 
met. They kind of crossed, right? Cross, okay. right? So this story was basically you're mixing two stories up. Am I two pilots up? Are yes. you sure? Yes, yes. This, that doesn't that sound like that was Sky TV. Yes, but the 60%. black boobs, the black boobs one was when um, the 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 story is that I guess Quinn is a far you know is a farmer. What used to be a fireman. And he gets into some kind of accident, and they all rush to the hospital where he is uh, at the hospital. Right. So all the so when they get to the hospital, they all kind of, are, you know, in their waiting room, they all kind of each get lost and get involved in these crazy like plots. <laughs> right. You remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and Sal falls asleep in the waiting. Sal room. Sal falls asleep in the waiting room and somehow wakes up, and he has black. Boob. He has breast <laughs> implants. <laughs> like, they're black. It was the funniest, and they spent like a thousand or two thousand dollars on these prost like prosthetic like tits. Black. It was unbelievable. It was the funniest thing I've ever it, seen in my it life. Was. It was. Hashtag it, black boobs. Now that yeah. was not. Does he still have them? <laughs> well, I meant like you know, like, like you've a seen the show. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I didn't that, mean on him. I meant like you know, like a little trophy case. And that's not the one you play the doctor in. That is the it one is. I play the doctor right. in. But that was that. Uh, what was that? I played the doctor, but it didn't go. It went to like a film festival, New York Television Film Festival. Yeah, was yeah, yeah. New York, oh, the New York Television. Film? Yeah, yeah. It played there, and that didn't go anywhere. After that pilot, that was I get a call or a text from me. There was Joe or Sal or Quinn, one of them, and they said, you know, why don't you come down to um, to Quinn's apartment at the time? He was, he was living in his apartment uh, in Staten Island. We're gonna try something different. So I would hang out with Sal during the week uh, back in the day when he used to be a bartender. And they were talking about how they were going to try something different, whereas they were going to mix their improv type skills with this whole new reality TV boom that was just happening then. And um, we, uh, I, I, I come down to the location and I see this van pull up and it says Mission Uncomfortable on the side of the van. <laughs> and Joe Gatto pops out of the, um, out of the van and that would, what we shot that day would, be, contribute to the sizzle reel what would become in Practical Jokers. Oh, nice. So I was like, a, a, I did some camera stuff uh, for them, and, uh, for that one. But that was like the last pilot. And then they got, you know, they pitched it around, they got the show. Then actually, there was another pilot, I think we both worked on, Mike, but not together. It was, uh, right. I don't even know, could we even say what it is? Go ahead. Why not? Who cares? Um, called, uh, it was like a game show. It was called. Oh, show me your nuts. Yeah, show me your nuts. So I, I did. A, I did. <laughs> I didn't know what you were like. Why couldn't we say that? I don't know. Show I don't me know. your nuts. Yeah. No, we're nuts. seriously. Yeah, just show me. No, just show oh, me. You just show me. Oh, oh, show the people nuts? a pair of shirts. These nuts. Are they? <laughs> these, <laughs> these got him. <laughs> um, they're vegan nuts. They're show vegan. me your nuts was great, man. I, I love <laughs> that. That was really good. And we've talked about that a bunch on this show because Joe Bergio was in that, and uh, Casey Jost was in that. I was there for the Casey. For, for that shoot, where where Sal gets beat up by um, the kid with the bat in, in the schoolyard. Yeah, yeah. I shot that with okay. with, with Jeff Sellis. Right on. So, um, so we we've like completely we crossed parallel, paths. Yeah, yeah. kind of, but it wow. never actually was formally yeah. introduced to him. We're like the same person. But Chris Lodondo here, like ground floor of what is now the Impractical Jokers. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. How come? How come you never came on with all of us? To what the do you show? Call, when they got uh, picked up, Sal mentioned something about you know your main uh, your name was like mentioned whatever but it wouldn't be worth it for you because it's, it's, i work for the you know i work for the state i have a good job day job uh i work in higher education and whatever you know they were going to pay me it just wouldn't yeah <laughs> you would, gotta follow your dreams i know i know what were you going to come on at <laughs> uh, like a uh, probably a, a production camera? assistant or something oh yeah, 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 yeah. you don't want to be a pa I don't know. so you weren't you didn't want to be higher than I don't, a PA. no i would never uh, no for the camera stuff i mean jeff sellis you know he's one of the most talented camera people i know stop but, it no, I'm kidding. Besides he's you, <laughs> he's good. <laughs> um, he's all right. He's good. No, he knows his stuff, Jeff. He, uh, he's the uh, he's an award-winning dictator of photography. Did I say dictator? <laughs> dictator. Award-winning dictator of photography. Dick, really? I've been busting his balls. Dictator. Really? Dictator. Why, Why does he have that reputation on set? Yeah. Uh, really? Uh, well, we well, show me your He was very patient. Well, he's very moving nice. up the ranks now because David Scarborough is directing, and Jeff's now director of photography. That's awesome. For good at fam. least for a little while, anyway. Um, so I call, and he's an award-winning director now because some guys are bigger than others just yes. one best comedy yes i was at one of those premieres too in stone island great yeah were you at the makerspace no no ladondo just kind of pops in and out of the world so oh, man yeah so um tell me your so tell the people a little bit about you now so you have uh you have your own podcast called acknowledge acknowledge yeah i haven't done it in a while probably longer than um than uh, what say you, but it's called Acknowledge with Chris Ladondo. It's not a comedy show because I'm not a comedian. What are we acknowledging? Other people, the guests. So, like, 
there's been uh, documentary filmmakers I interviewed on there. Have you ever seen the film A Band Called Death, which was produced yeah. by Scott Mosher? Mosher. Yeah. Uh, I had the Dennis two- pulling it out. Yeah, right? boom. Yeah. It was about that uh, that band called Death. A band called Death. Death. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were awesome. They found, he had like they were like a proto punk sound, right? Yeah. They they were probably. It was these uh, three. Uh, uh, it was three black guys in Detroit, like in the early seventies. Yeah, playing kind of like yeah, like punk before um, you know before the GBs and all that, all that stuff. All that yeah, stuff. Uh, and um, their music kind of got rediscovered, like on vinyl, uh, about maybe ten ten years somebody's ago. Somebody's attic, so. right? Wasn't it? Yeah, just the, somebody's attic. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's re- they're back. If you ju- they're actually in Rolling Stone magazine, I think this past issue or whatever about them. But you the see, film, a, a fortune has been thrown away of, in Mom's attic. Just yeah, Mom's it's, cleaning out. That's attics. like that story with uh, Ben Stiller. He's in a uh, he he was in a band when he was younger. Really? Yeah. And uh, they cut one album, and they were terrible. They were not good. They actually he didn't even know how to play instruments. And um, there's like this weird underground following because like you could find it on vinyl somewhere. Check that out. Yeah, it's Ben, ben Stiller has a band, and it, <laughs> he was on he was on Howard Stern. And he played a, like a song, and it was so ridiculous. But was that his recent appearance? Because I didn't hear it. Yeah, ben Stiller, right. yes. Now, okay. now I heard that that's the way the Offspring started. Didn't the Offspring? They all decided they all wanted to like, let's all be a band. Okay, none of us can play instruments. Okay, you know you you play drums and you play. The I guitar. like the Offspring. Really? Now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean Offspring. I mean. I, I mean, I'm sure they got good before they got famous, but th- yeah. that's how they all started. They Plus, harmonize like, pretty well, yeah. those two guys. So, um, uh, Un, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. <laughs> <laughs> We've been uh, periscoping this, but I'm going to cut this off. You want to say peace out to the Periscope people? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Periscope people, for watching. And uh, make sure you go and uh, check out PBR on YouTube, youtube.com slash P2B Revolution. Dennis Wave. LaDonna, you want to say anything before we go? Love you all. Hearts, 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 hearts. Hearts, 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 hearts. Mm-hmm. hearts, hearts. Soy hearts. Um, so I had those two filmmakers on the uh, on the podcast, um, interviewed them. I've had people that run charities, this and that, all this type of weird shit, and then some fun stuff. But so I haven't done it. And where week. do you do that? You d- that I do. Uh, well, I have a portable setup. I have, I have a um, Zoom H4. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll go to uh, wherever the interviewer he is you know where they live wherever or do it through skype and the intros and the outros i actually do in my garage oh nice <laughs> so he's a zoom he's got two xlrs in kind of out to the mic and not y- yes or something like that sometimes yeah sometimes but most of the time i just use the existing mic that's on and it's pretty good huh. uh, again um neither of us have been invited or even dennis but who would invite you anywhere no. have been invited on <laughs> you don't know what i've been invited well let's i've been invited yeah nothing, I mean, nothing well this is. may change i mean i haven't i haven't acknowledged my you know my own my own stuff <laughs> you're not I'm acknowledging not your own podcast I'm, so. I'm totally neglecting myself so what brought you to that point um so l- let's go back even further man you grew up on staten island yes how was that tell us about that sucks strong island well i love no, how you strong immediately strong island is long sucks. island Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, well, originally from Brooklyn. What's the nickname for Staten Island, though? Shaolin. Shaolin, Wu-Tang. that's right, yeah. Uh, growing, up, slums of Shaolin, the of the growing up on Staten Island, there's like, you know, I, I tell people it's a borough divided. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, there's a north and a south. And there's a Mason-Dixon in between. The north, <laughs> north is a lot, of the, a lot of artsy type people, old money, wealth, and poverty, uh, and, you know, and diversity. South Shore, where I grew up, Everybody from Brooklyn, pretty much, um, mostly Italian American. It's predominantly Italian American. It's the most Italian American spot in the city. Where did you Where did you go to high school? I went to Tottenville High School, okay. which is not actually in Tottenville. It's in Huguenot. That's where I grew up. Um, How so cool it's about Staten Island. Yeah, it's all right. Huguenot. You're not missing anything. <laughs> French Canadian. It is French. Yeah, Huguenots are French, right? Um, so I grew up there. Uh, you know, on the south side, <laughs> which sounds rough, but it wasn't at all. Uh, grew up there and then eventually moved to the North shore of Staten Island in St. George, which is where the cargo cafe is. And that's where I met Sal at a time when I, you know, I usually, when I explain this to people, it was a kind of a bad time in my life. Um, I used to work in finance briefly for a couple of years. I was unfortunate to work at one world financial center. I was there for nine 11. So I had to experience all that crap and then oh, like being re- relocated and you know, then where we were located, there was like anthrax attacks across the street. If you remember that. So it was, a, it was all a, the signs were pointing you to get out of the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, to get the, out. Right. The universe is talking. What, uh, it sucked. Walk me through that day. 
You really, you really want to talk about well, yeah, that? Day? Yeah, yeah. I saw a lot of bad things. That well, day. Let, like let's let's start with the fact you worked in One World Trade. Right? Uh, one no, One World Financial Center, well, okay. directly across the street. All right, so you get up at a regular time. Get up, beautiful day. Um, I was working a month. Uh, I started working August eighth, two thousand one. Oh my god! For uh, a brokerage uh, firm, uh, it was like my real first job out of college. Didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I was an undergraduate sociology major. Uh, for a while, I dabbled with maybe becoming a police officer, but I, I didn't know. Uh, my father worked in um, brokerage for many years, so I figured I'd give it a shot. You know, my dad was successful. Let me give it a shot. Um, worked in um, a, 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 what do you call it? Uh, a headhunter firm, which got me a job at this place in One World Financial Center. It's CIBC World Markets. It's a Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. So I started there um, doing international settlements, boring stuff, settling mm -hmm. trades of international trades. I'm clueless when it comes to that. Yeah, stuff. You, you, yeah it's no not very boring. Uh, you know, had a hard time, never took a business class in my life, don't know anything about that stuff, you know. Um, felt that right away that maybe it wasn't for me. Um, I wasn't doing well at it in the, in the first few weeks. I wasn't <laughs> doing well at it. Um, I remember I took, I had a notebook. Uh, that I brought home with me, and I started like making notes because I'm like I really want to you know give this my shot you know I'm just like, yeah, right, you want to do, do, do the best I want to do the best I can do. Um, I packed a, you know my high school bag that I carried this my, this the satchel was kind of like my Indiana Jones satchel that Your I carried. Satchel. Yeah, it was a Jan Sports satchel that I nice. carried uh, through high school through college, kind of like a good luck charm. And I uh, I went into you know into Manhattan into you know took the ferry walked up uh, Broadway. Kind so of like so, same ritual. I so you're doing this commute for about a month, right before that. So month, it's like, yeah. so you're you're into the commute. You're doing the same thing over. You're getting up at the same time. You have yeah. your routine. Mm -hmm. uh, I was you're, living at home still, you know, so young. Uh, so this day you wake up, it's beautiful. beautiful. Everything's going as normal. calm. Like the, like on the ferry, like you know, it was just glass, like glass, exactly. Yeah, like the who water just cut like right through it. Uh, you know, walk up to. Uh, didn't even take the train. I would walk up to Broadway to uh, 200 Liberty Street. Uh, uh, I would always have this ritual. I would just like touch the World Trade Center. You know, I was like, oh, wow, well, you know, it's pretty touching yeah. the World Trade Center. Well, for, pe would, for people that don't know, the Staten Island Ferry, which you took over from the South Shore, lets off right down on, right, all yeah, the way down. Yeah, in Battery Park, right. Yeah. Which is, you know, a couple blocks from World Trade Yeah. So, you know, I get there. Um, I get there early because I'm, I work in the international side of, of the business. So, you know, you're talking to people in Europe, so you get there like an hour or two than, than the normal nine to five. So I get there and I turn on my computer, you know, I got a, a coffee or whatever. And my view of the city uh, is blocked by the World Trade Center. It's mm -hmm. directly across the street from me. So I can't see anything but the two buildings in front of me. And, you know, I'm doing my thing, just logged in my computer. I hear like, you know, like, those big mortar, like fireworks, the big steel ones that people we put were just talking about. Just talking about yeah, that, just, <laughs> that sound, yeah. that yeah. hollow type sound. I hear that and I see debris like crash up against the window in front of me. And there are offices in front of me, a little office. How high are you up? Sixth floor. Okay. Right. Um, and I hear my boss screaming, holy shit, holy shit. And I walk up, you know to the windows and I see that there's like a, you know, looking up at the, the tower, um, there's like a big slash through it. But little did we know th that was the exit wound of, cause if the first plane came from Logan airport in Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it came out of this frame this way and like, you know, popped out. So we're looking out here, we're thinking something happened on this side. Uh -huh. Um, and it, you know, and we find out that, you know, we're like, oh, is it a gas line explosion? Because Canafix Gerald had like a huge um, couple of floors of like uh, cafeterias and this and that, a lot of great stuff. And we hear, oh, a small plane hit the, uh, the, the towers. Right. I remember that's what I first heard too. And uh, the, my boss at the time, he was like, make sure you call everybody, let them know that you're okay. My father worked downtown for many years, but this time he worked on Park Avenue. So I gave him a call, I'm like, hey, Dad, you'll never believe it. Freaking plane just hit the World Trade Center. He's like, get out of here. I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, just, you know, be careful. Let me know, you know what happens, whatever. So I hang up the phone on my desk. I walk back to the, uh, the front of the window, and I'm looking up, and you start seeing, like, these things falling out of, the, out of, the, out of there, and it's like, it's not registering. But you clearly see there's I, people that are jumping out. Holding hands oh. on fire. Was this after? Was this after the second plane? This after the first one. 
Right. As, oh, so the first, because you know, you're seeing that, and then you're looking down on the on the West Side Highway, and, and you're only six by, floors up, so you can clearly see this right in front of me, in the front of me, or on top of the Marriott. You can't see them; they're falling on top of the Marriott, and it's not Jeez. registering. You're looking at it, and you can't hear anything. You just see like this horror, but there's no sound because it's very quiet through these windows. But down the hall, I just hear screams of like women that are watching it too, and it's registering to me of what my eyes are actually. My saying. goodness, <laughs> why are we talking about this? Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's not <laughs> we, we all remember that day so vividly. I know, but this is you know, this is, it's that that's intense. You know, <laughs> that's really. Really this intense. is a comedy show, right? No. Um, hey, it, it, the yeah. show is what it is. It's about the revolution of our guest. You well, know? that it, day definitely. And this, I'm sure this had. A, yeah, a, it had a very. Yeah, it did. Um, well, then I well when I hang up the phone, I walk up to the window again, and then all of a sudden I hear and see right in front of me the second plane, like right in front of me, and it you know turns and and it just as soon as when it hits the building, I immediately turn and I tell everybody run, screaming. Right? So you knew right away, like this it was a terrorist attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but people do the weirdest things in emergencies, like guys like still, fight or flight, man. Well, or you know? stay and still continue doing your work. It's like, bro, get the fuck. They out want to imagine that it's like really get, not happening. They're just like, what, huh? And they're like doing their work. It's like, get up. We got to get out of this building. And for people that are listening, if you are in a building that you're working in, please know your exits because I didn't, and I'm running around and every door that I was opening up led to stairs going up. What? I didn't know where the exit was. Jeez. It was oh terrifying. Goodness. It was terrifying. Well, I'm because at the, you weren't waiting for elevators at that point. Right? Well, n yeah, no. And I didn't know where the exit were. I'm sure if I knew ahead of time, it would be very easy to run down the steps. Um, and then I went to the elevator bay and I went in because I didn't know where I was going. I was just, I just started there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. It's a massive building. I have no idea. It's a maze. Um, I remember I get into the elevator, a bunch of people pushing their way in. And as it's going down, the doors are opening for all the floors. <laughs> and let me tell you, survival of some people, like guys in front of me, like pushing, like the thing closed on people, like, you know, and then all of a sudden it stops. And the young guy goes, Probably too heavy. Well, the guy says, Elevator's not going anywhere. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die in this elevator. And the elevator's packed. It's packed. But oh, it stopped, not on a floor. It's, it's, it stopped. And then it went, it went down to the floor, and the doors, you know, open and we're just running. And. We're running towards, I guess, where the street is, towards the World Trade Center, because it's directly across the street, and you have like steel, steel beams and this and that, bodies falling out, and the security's like, you know, waving us to the west side, so they go by the water, so I go out to the, you know, the uh, the Jersey side of the building and kind of hug the coast, because mm -hmm. I want to see everything around me. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. And you're hearing all sorts of crazy shit. You're hearing- like, When you come out of the building, it's just on fire at this point? It's burning. It's well, both buildings are on fire. Uh, so both planes are crashed. Um, what do you call, uh, I'm, you know, trying to make my way towards the ferry and my, see my phone's going off. And, but I, I, if you remember that day, I, I, I don't know, I didn't have a service. Yeah. yeah. I see him getting, I can't pick it up. And I see that it's like my dad, it's people, it's whatever. And, uh, you know, I make it to, um, to the ferry terminal and I see that it's packed, but it's closed. They're all like, I was saying, no boats, it's close. I'm saying, I said, how the fuck am I getting off this island? I'm stranded here. So I'm contemplating. I'm like, do I run back up going towards the buildings and go over the, the Brooklyn Bridge to get off of Manhattan? As I'm thinking of that, I hear the sound that I'll never forget in my life. And it's the first tower collapsing. Oh, man. And it just. So when that happens, people you turn jumping off the fucking dock of the by the ferry terminal was into, the water? into the water to just go, panicking to swim it just to yeah people jumped off like there was there's the ferry terminal and then to the, if you're facing the staten island ferry uh terminal to the right is a, a coast guard building and it was one coast guard uh officer standing in front of the building because people were trying to get away even though you're blocks away from the trade center they're trying to move forward away from everything and the guy's yelling at everybody to get back this is federal property or whatever you know it's military so you yeah. Whatever. That thing came down, the fucking guy pushed him out of the way, people jumping in the water. <laughs> all of a sudden you hear boom, the, the doors open up the ferry and we all go on. So we're on the boat. So the boat was there and the they boat was there. They weren't yeah, they 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 locked down the, the Manhattan. But when the first building came down, like, you all gotta bet, all you, bets you, are off. You yeah. gotta let Get people away, out. Away. Yeah. You gotta let people out. You gotta know the, the most of those Which are, turned out to be uh if if you're familiar with the, the you know that day and the you know the rescue operation, it was the largest water evacuation rescue in the history of the world. Really? Yeah, because a lot of the uh, New York waterway boats, the Statue of Liberty boats, uh, boats from like Weehawken and things they like all that. Jumped in. They all jumped in to yeah. help. Um so I get on the boat and I remember I met up with some people I used to travel with. I would I saw them there. And 
I've never seen, and I hope to never see this again, but everybody has a life preserver like in their hand on the, on the Staten Island ferry. If you haven't been on the ferry, it's just unheard of to have a life preserver out. Um, and I remember this one girl was hysterical crying. Uh, she was holding on the leg of like this, this kid I used to commute with. And, uh, she, I was like, what's the matter? She's like, she's, just, you know, she's terrified, you know, was she up there? I was like, no, she was, they said that she was close, but she was just, you know, everybody was terrified. She didn't have a life preserver. So I remember just handing her mine and she like just grabbed and like just, you know, clutched onto it. Right. And then I remember too, as we're pulling out, it's totally engulfed in smoke, uh, the whole area. So you can't see out. And I remember when we started going further out the first thing that i saw because we still we were hearing all these things that they're crashing helicopters yeah there was so uh, this, many was, stories it was crazy the, the police are saying there's more more planes coming like police was telling us yeah. that it was just mass hysteria and then we the first thing that i see is the statue of liberty ironically um and it's still standing that's right. what we're like is it so i'm looking at the verrazano bridge is it still there and then i turn around i hear this you know huge you know noise and it's and the can, other building falling down i watched it fall down but still when i when the when we docked on the Staten island side um what do you call uh well i turned around and i'm like oh the buildings didn't fall down like you can still see like a vapor trail of the two of them but it's just your imagination because you're always used to seeing them there yeah it's just like a mushroom cloud yeah. of just like you know Man. you see the two things and that wasn't there and i remember two running up uh, and I saw a friend of mine that was a police captain and I ran into him and he's like, I must've lost 200 people or so today. And, you know, we kind of hugged each other. Whatever. And then there's a police station right next to the ferry terminal called the 120 precinct. And I remember seeing my uncle, Michael, who was a police detective at the time. And he was just standing there by himself, looking out into the water. He didn't work in that police station. He worked for, um, police headquarters. I remember just seeing him there and, I get up to him like, Uncle Michael, you don't want to even know what's going on. He's like, I got to get over there. I got to get over there right now. And that's just the difference of between those type of people. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like so you're running away the, from it and they're running to it. There's a few that run towards. Yeah. So as you're getting off the ferry, mm -hmm. the ferry is obviously going back to get more people. Are people jumping on the ferry to go help? Uh, yeah, and, but there's a lot of military stuff. That was the day you got to see a lot of things that we have. Like that you don't even know about. Oh, yeah. it's crazy. Things popping out of everywhere. Um, but it... Yeah, I mean, it, what, it messed me up for a long time. After that, I mean, I get, I finally get home. Well, I finally get down down the road. There was uh, the Snug Harbor Cultural Center on Staten Island, and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she was a school teacher at a Montessori school there, and I had to get to her because my phone was useless. So I go pretty much to tell her that I'm alive. I remember I get there, and um, you know, I tell her you know, I'm alive, whatever, and I make a phone call to my grandmother. Uh, at the time, and I remember she picked up the phone. I hear that she was crying, and I'm like, "Nanny, I'm alive." You know, she was like, "Thank God." Yeah, it was, it was, it was rough. And also, you know, another thing too, my parents had split up like a couple of years prior to that, and you know that's normal these days. But I was always very, you know, very close, you know, with my parents. Grew up with them. Didn't want to see anything uh, with them, you know, go wrong. And uh, I kind of took it out like on my my dad for a while. I didn't talk to him. And I remember when I first got to call him, he thought I was dead, you know, and... Uh, you see those buildings go down. Yeah, he thought area. I was dead. Well, they were watching in Midtown on big screens, and when he saw it collapse, he's like, my son is there. He's like yeah. standing. He thought I was like outside watching, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. He thought I was dead. And, you know, at the time, I like, before that, my dad would be like, you, you know, be on the phone and be like, hey, I love you, Chris. And I, yeah, you know, I would, have, I would never say I love you back because yeah. I was hurt still from that. And I remember, he's like, I love you. I'm like, I love you, Dad. You know, because yeah. I knew that to hear his voice at the time, I wasn't a dad, you know, that I am now. I kind of jumped into his shoes to, 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 to feel like what it must be like to be a worried parent. So it was like, you know, we were cool again after yeah. that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy the amount of like stories that There's come so many, from yeah, that like, day and, and some very positive. Yeah. I mean, a very, out of a very tragic thing. But like, there's so many well, stories like that. that well, this is Seth MacFarlane was on that. He was he, supposed to be supposed on that, to be right. on the, that Boston plane. The Boston Absolutely, plane. yeah. He missed it by half an hour because he was drunk the night before. He got he got drunk the night before. Yeah, he got messed up. Well, yeah. th this is the thing when something like that happens. It may it never happen again uh, to anybody. You know, something terrible that magnitude or anything negative. You don't want the biggest thing in your life to be something negative. Right. Yeah. So the best thing to do. I mean, for me, I be, I struggled with it for a very long time, uh, but I knew that. There was probably a young person 
in that building that was my age at the time, hated his job, and he knew he was going to die. And there was nothing that he can do for, about it. Because I hated working in that field. I did for like three more you know, years. Yeah, you, well, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, how the hell do you transition away from this story? Not well, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm well, the only way I wanted, for, I wanted to say, like, you know, thank you so much for sharing that story. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't told it in a while. So uh, anybody watching this or listening to this, you got to watch it just to see Chris's uh, I'm trying. I'm holding. Yeah, I'm very right? holding it back. <laughs> I, I think every it, woman that is out there listening or watching right now is in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> they love oh, you right now. And the, um, the moral of the story, though, I think the positive well, thing to take out of this is that you weren't, you weren't, uh, you weren't supposed to work in that industry, man. <laughs> well, no. Did you guys all hear that? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. That's crazy. Sorry. <laughs> well, what, so you don't want the biggest thing to be something negative in your life. So uh, w when I thought about people that didn't make it out, that knew that they were going to die, that, that didn't like their job, I felt that I have to live for them. Yeah. So <clears throat> I started doing things. I started donating blood, like volunteering. Like I always did some kind of charity. Like some do something. And also, I was always I had dreams of wanting to work in film and television when I was a kid for a long time, and then kind of gave it up. Um, but I always had in the back of my head, if I can be creative, I'm going to do that. I was a musician when I was in high school, but I never was in a band. Like a year or two after that, I got into a band, and, you know, and performed uh, at you know places in Manhattan. Got into another band after that, and, you know, performed at even bigger places in, around Manhattan and stuff. So I try to live for them, you know. And be creative. Which is a great way to be. I mean, yeah, and it's tough. Believe me, and if anybody knows me, they'll say that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a negative Chris, or, you know, I'm stressed out. I am. But at the same time, you, you don't want the biggest thing in life to be something negative. I went back to school, I got a master's degree. I changed careers, I switched out to work in higher ed. Um, I, uh, I, when I, I bought this, this uh, apartment in St. George, Staten Island, the North Shore, and was alone for, you know, uh, Nobody from the, the, the my friends from the, the South Shore wouldn't, uh, wouldn't go to the North Shore, wouldn't hang out. And it made me get up and walk down the street to this bar called the Cargo, where there was a lot of uh, artistic type people and to like a lot of different types of things there. And that's where I met Sal Volcano right. and everybody and all those guys and how they were doing things creatively. And I had said, you know, if you ever need any help, please just keep me in mind, you know? So... Um, whenever there was a chance for me to do something, they would get in touch with me, and I and I got to help them out in their sketches, got to help them out on their uh, on their the pilots, and eventually, you know, now with the what say you? So in a way, it's crazy how the world works. Yeah, right? they helped me. So, um, yeah, I'm very I'm extremely grateful for them. If they don't know that by now, I mean, I try not to, you know, to mention that to you know to them like hey you know you guys kind of like really helped me a lot but i always tell quinn I'm like quinn thanks man we really appreciate it and he's like what we're friends bro relax and he gives me like this look like he's gonna kick my ass <laughs> when i tell him i'm like I i'm just wanted to say i'm great just shut up it's it's cool it's cool like if i'm on telling it's, steve like, dave or something yeah. it's, like, it's like that bro understanding <laughs> yeah yeah but like um yeah it's cool so uh those of you watching you can you know you're stronger than you think type of thing. I know it sounds very Disney, but it's yeah. true. If you want to do something, just just freaking do it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it's funny. Just do it. Yeah. Our like this have... podcast, like, you know, yeah. like how the hell do you make a podcast? I'm thinking like, this is an amazing setup. Like I got to tell you, right now I'm worried about my balls. I didn't wear any protective, <laughs> you know, am I, am I safe? <laughs> well, well what, what's, what's well, going to happen to your balls? Well, well, well you know, there's like some safe? kind of like radiation, <laughs> right, you know, Oh, because um, oh, all this, all this yeah, technology. Yeah, technology is amazing. Um, <laughs> I had no idea where you were going with that. Well, yeah. I know Dennis is here. Why? Oh, you, you know. because he had like my hand on my, like the whole time? I thought the, whole the, <laughs> the, the dog was messing with <laughs> Oh, that was the dog? <laughs> did, did you know that, um, you, you talk about like crazy things about that day. Did you know Jesse Pinkman was uh, in the tower? Come I on. heard. Yeah. I heard he was. He yeah, was, he was. Oh Jesse, God. you want to talk about that day? Yo, I don't like to talk about it, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Dennis got offended. It's, like, listen. why? Why did that offend you? <laughs> I don't know. We're just doing I, this beautiful, heartfelt listen, story. I, I'm trying to personally try them. I bef before I when I was like 18, I worked in a in a television studio on Staten Island. I was like a house studio guy, and one of the people that worked with there was a studio manager. That one of the funniest guys I knew. His brother was a fireman and would work there too. He wound up dying that day. He was one of the funniest people that I knew growing up. Him and his brother, amazing. Uh, 
and he would do the same thing. If he was here right now, he would make it, you know, he would joke about it. Just yeah. how they work. Well, some people <laughs> deal with it that way. I mean, yeah. you, know, you know, tragedy plus time equals comedy yeah, at yeah, times, yeah. you know. And, and Saturday Night Live, yeah. a couple yeah. weeks after, did a show. Which oh, I absolutely. Which was a great yeah. thing to do. It's like, but you know what? It, it, we, we live in a in just the revolution of our lives and our time and our guests and it, a post 9-11 world. Yeah. I mean, uh, really quick story, not to keep going with this. A couple years ago when that earthquake happened in... Um, in uh, in um, Washington D.C. and it went like all the way up the yeah, coast. Yeah. We used to shoot Fast Lane Daily at fifteen fifteen Broadway in Times Square, forty six floors up, and it's a beautiful day outside, similar to it how it was on nine yeah, eleven. I remember, and I was four hundred and sixty feet up in the air in oh Times God. Square, and just a few weeks ago was when that bomb scare of the truck in Times Square that you know they 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 got thank God. All of a sudden, the building is going up and down. And going like this. Oh my god! And I've never been in an earthquake before. I'm an East Coast person, <laughs> right? And uh, I'm just like, f- like, like you don't, you, you're not thinking like earthquake. You're thinking terror attack, right? Because it's a post 9/11 yeah. world. And I just remember this huge building. I'm looking over at the Marriott Marquis, and we're going like this and bouncing like this. And this dude Shane sit behind me. He goes, "Oh, he was from California." Uh-huh. He goes, "Oh, it's an earthquake. Yeah, it'll be fine." And I'm like, dude, how do you know? <laughs> the ground how do you is know? shaking. This is New York City. You know, this is where, where they mind, come. They, yeah. they come here. That's <laughs> like, if 9-11 never happened, my mind would have been like, yeah. holy shit, earthquake. Right. But now it's, it's our minds go immediately to that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> or, yeah, again, that day of the earthquake, I will never forget, man. I, it was really terrible for me. I got That real, was scary as shit. I got really bad poison ivy. I was going to say, I was waiting for the joke. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. I got really bad poison ivy that day. Just saying. Ha, all right. I mean, that's pretty much the worst thing that happened with that earthquake, by the way, was the poison ivy I got. Well, the Washington Monument was pretty banged up. No. <laughs> they're still working on the yeah, Washington Monument. They're still doing construction. You know it. why? What, you know what's in that? Dennis, tell them what's inside the Washington uh, Monument. Oh, here we go. I don't know what I was supposed to say right I, now. I thought you knew. I thought you knew. <laughs> So, so wait, that was scripted? No, like we, we went oh, through this crazy story just to get for to some that. kind of punchline about the Washington Monument that had something to do with like it's filled with like beef. <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that a guy? This guy, <laughs> this guy is, he's like fascinated with meat. Oh, yeah. He loves meat. He's, you're, it consumes you. Let me tell you a funny, quick, funny story. Meats and cheeses, right? <laughs> we, were in, uh, we were in at Boston, uh, Michael and Greg Oliver. Uh, Jiggy. And Jiggy. Was at, that was up at the, uh, the Boston... Um, Tenderloin's uh, show uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it went up with Mike, uh, Sal's cousin, Mike Cella, and we ran into you. Didn't know you were going to be there. You were doing some kind of uh, project for um, yeah, the sizzle reel. Yeah, yeah. Um, we talk about it, and so we're backstage most of you know most of the night talking whatever, and they're breaking my chops. How much fun? First of all, how much was, fun was that? That was so much fun. I really had a great time. It, it was. I was. I was telling. Um, Mike and Sal, it was the the best time, best weekend I had in a long time. Because, like, I don't get to see Sal or any of those guys at all anymore. Like, very rarely right. I run into them. Everything is through text. Like, people ask me, "Oh, can you, you know, when you see Sal, I'm like, you may see him before I, <laughs> I do." <laughs> yeah. So it was the first time I got to actually hang out with them in a very long time. So it was a lot of fun. So we're backstage uh, at the Wilbur Theater, and you guys were doing your uh, sizzle reel with Jiggy, but then somebody. I guess backstage, I didn't recognize him, but he... Uh, oh, it was the guy from the league. Yeah. I, I picked him out. Oh, you're going to make... I yeah, totally forgot about yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, I kept uh, this in the back pocket, uh, man. <laughs> I had to. I got to have something. Th- you, uh, gonna, I totally <laughs> forgot about this. You even told me you were going to bring this up. Um, and I, and I feel name? dumb now because I don't know his name. It was Stephen... Dennis! What? Who's the guy? <laughs> the guy from the league. Uh, Stephen uh, Renzisi? Yes, yes. Okay, thank so you. I'm backstage. Some guy is like, yo, yo, man, you got a lighter? I'm like, no. No, I don't get a lighter. And he's like asking people. And I guess he gets a lighter from somebody. And uh, I'm like, I recognize this guy. Oh, that's the guy from, uh, this guy from the league. That just... <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. like, who, huh? And he's like, FX, FX. I'm like, I don't, I don't watch FX. Um, so, so he goes up to this guy. And says, "Hey, man, love you know, love the show, whatever he shakes on the guy was oh, really man. cool. The guy was you, really cool. You can I, tell. He, yeah. Mike, nah, Mike was cool about it too. Yeah, you cool. had such potential to told like the way wait, you're wait, telling wait, the story. Wait, right wait, now? wait, I'm ah, going there, bro. Going. <laughs> I'm going there. I'm smoothing <laughs> it out first. Um, so he wants to get a picture with this guy. So I see him go for a cell phone. I'm like, Mike, I'll, let me, you know, let me take that. You know, I'll, I'll take from. It's like, no, I sweat, Dennis, <laughs> Dennis the intern, fucking Derek D." I swear, if I'm lying, may I be force-fed everything from the dollar menu. <laughs> <laughs> this guy turns to me and says, 
not grown man. Nah, it's all right. I'll selfie it. I swear to you. He said, I'll selfie it. And he grabs the guy and like does. He, he, he gives so like precious. Yeah, I did see that. Look at that. He's, yeah. He had like his head like buried like in his chest. Like for did a you second. snuggle? Like they were snuggling. They were I was like, snuggling. I was going to take the picture for him. We get a better picture. He's like, nah, man, I'll selfie it. I'll selfie it. I just wish I was there to hear the way he said oh, selfie. So I, just so the way precious. I said it. Yeah. It's, it's, so, it's so weird, man, because it's not like. I don't. I'm not. I don't get starstruck. You know. I mean. Yeah. I, I'm around the like when I do the Ranger gig. I'm around hot NHL players. Yeah. I, you know. I'm right, around yeah. the Jokers all the time. Like, I, there's always people around when you're working in. There's certain people that'll get you. Just like, so, well, oh, <laughs> why? this guy, dude. I was like, did so something. taken off. Yeah. Because why? Because it's it, you didn't expect. Did you, not expect. If it. you knew he was going to be there, it might have been different. Yeah. But it was like, uh, oh, oh shit. Yeah. You know. Well, supposedly the day before, and I would have geeked out of this. Um, T.J. Miller was with them, right? Oh really? I liked you. Yeah. From, I don't know. TJ Miller's from awesome. Silicon Valley. Who's I, TJ Miller. From, so, you've yeah, seen you him in every movie. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's great. T, uh, Silicon Valley is what it's took an amazing off for show. Him. Oh, it's great. I would probably geek out. Now I worked. He's got a famous audition tape when he was auditioning for Yogi Bear. He ended up getting a hold of like this Hollywood bear and doing like an audition with a real bear, and nobody knew it was an audition. <laughs> <laughs> for Yogi Bear. It got viral and everyone thought it was just TJ Miller That's being amazing. Like, what is he doing? Is he doing Shakespeare with a bear? And he's like, no, I'm auditioning for the Yogi Bear movie. Sometimes, I mean, I can understand that you got excited because, you know, that guy. I, I, I am not going to deny I I get to see a lot of Selfie. people. I'm working in Manhattan where I work too. Uh, the school that I work at, actually, the, a lot of TV shows and movies I filmed there, they just rent that space out. I think it's more, it's just easier than going in like Silver Cup or whatever. Um, and I see a lot of people, but I do. I did geek out once. I met. This was at the height of the show. Um, Michael Emerson uh, from from Lost. If you're familiar. Oh with the Lost. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, uh, Benjamin, Lin- Benjamin Benjamin Linus. Yeah, and the creepiest guy on TV. He yeah. I, nicest guy in the world, and I see him all the time. To now, like the last time I saw him, he was actually. He had his um, na- a napkin. He was walking his dog. And he was actually taking the shit out of his dog's ass. I was like, "Hey, Miss Emerson, how you doing?" He's looking up with his shit in his hand. He's like, "Hey, how you doing?" Like, he sees me all the time. So like, um, but yeah, at first, but <laughs> all the time. So we're like buddies. Uh, but I see, yeah, I see shared everybody. a moment. I've seen everybody. You know, it was it was like that that day. What show was that though? I'm not familiar with that show. We go back one? to that guy. What show? The League. The, the League? League. Oh, The League. Is it? It's, 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 a it's, a, it's a sketch show. It's comedy. Yeah, yeah it's a comedy it's, show. It's a sitcom. It's about a bunch of guys that are in a fantasy football league. But that's oh, okay. Like, but it has like, nothing to do with. Yeah, it's like uh, okay. very little. It's bit It's very that. much in the line with uh, Always Sunny. Sunny. Yeah. yeah, very much. Oh, okay. It's, it's, cool. it's an FX show. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So you know, I'm there shooting the Sizzle Reel with Greg Oliver, and we're what we're doing. And Derek, you know, you've seen it, and you know about it. It's like we. I wasn't sure if you were going to talk about. it. Well, I don't want to talk too much about it. Yeah, we're in I don't even know what it was. We're in the process of like okay. putting it out there, trying to sell it. Cool. So I don't want to say too much about it, but I will tell you that it had to do with interviewing comedians, which you saw. Mm-hmm. We were interviewing mm-hmm. Jiggy. So when I saw this guy, because the next night he was playing that theater, and that's why he was there. Okay. So through my mind, all of these things start happening. You know, like we, we got to get him on the sizzle reel. Like, yeah, how yeah. do we get him on a sizzle reel? Holy shit, I love his show. I got to get on <laughs> a selfie with him. I got to get a selfie. I got a picture. <laughs> I have a so, selfie. I was just totally taken <laughs> back by it, man. Put but my that's head cool. on your shoulder. No, but that's and nice. Selfie it. There was and he was cool, too. So, like, that's even better. Like, he was a nice guy, right? He was great. It's the best great. when people you meet meet right. expectations. Because, yes. you know, I work in the city, too. I work in the same field. And, 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 and you come... You come across those people like I, I was in the elevator a couple times with Ethan Hawke. Oh, that's awesome! And I'm He's just one like, of my favorites. I'm just like, hey man, I, I I really like your movies and stuff. And of course, in my head, I want to go, hey man, you know, I'm an actor. I, I, I would love to. Here's my card. Maybe give me a call. I would love to work with you sometime. Like, but nah, it's rookie mistake. And then yeah, yeah I never, no, no, I never ever <laughs> okay, do that. Yeah. That's what you want to right, do, right, right, Because you're like, you have the power. Just put me. But uh, yeah, like Joan Joan Rivers. I was in the elevator with her. Um, this dude, the dude, a couple people from Boardwalk Empire, and, and then you put Derek D on the microphone sitting across from Adam Richman, and he says, Jirish. Jirish. That's where he goes. The best, legendary, half, legendary, half Jewish, half, half Irish, Irish. Jirish. Jirish. One of the most legendary. Uh, <laughs> why we think you think? Uh, of not, all, of not, all, not why we think you think. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Whatever it was. America. Did you ever meet? Um, did you ever meet anybody famous and they turned out to be a dick? It was like a real letdown. Yeah. Oh, you, you, well, you want to say? You want to say, right? No, I almost said it, and then you stopped. <laughs> remember, remember, Colby Calais? She's still around, the yeah. singer. Yeah, she was kind of a bitch to me a little bit. <sighs> no, it was a bitch to me. Kennedy, remember her really? from MTV? Oh, she was a good looking girl. 
Kennedy from yeah. Beach. Kennedy was a good she, looking girl. Like this yeah. is like in 1995. Mm. I was like, hi, Kennedy. And she just totally snubbed me. The height of her power. And I was like 17 years old, you know, the height of whatever. She was a total B. So, you know, kind of bring this kind of back to where you came from. In this conversation, we kind of picked out that you you had, like, you worked for the TV station in Staten Island. Like, you had these these production backgrounds. Why did you go into finance? Like, what pushed you in that direction? Well, finance was right after, okay, when... You I obviously read, had like the love or the oh want. yeah. Since I was very young, I mean, I was in TV production in junior high school. I was in a, in a TV production in high school. Um, I graduate high school. I go to college for two weeks, and I drop out against you know the the wishes of my family, whatever. I was like, the hell with this. You know, I'm gonna try to get a job working in film. I know no. I'm 18 years old. Know no one. Uh, it's 1995. It's a There's no, industry, it's a man. completely different thing. It's film. I'm, th- you know, re- I have a, a magazine subscription since I'm 13 at American Cinematographer magazine. Like, yeah. what friggin' geek has that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, uh, so, um, you know, you had, you had options then. You had you had film or you had television. There were there was nothing. TV else. wasn't even like um, on my radar. Like, I wanted to do movies, but like. You know, I, I go I go to school for two weeks. I drop out. I work in that field like for two years, uh, and then I go back to college. And I say oh, I'm gonna get sixty credits, and I'll be a police officer like everybody else. I became a fireman or a cop or whatever this that in my neighborhood growing up. And I get into college, and I'm like, oh, first year. I'm like, oh, like this is really interesting. And I I do the two years. I get the associate's degree. I was like, oh, I think I'll stay a little more. I get a bachelor's degree. Um, do, I do all right, and. Um, I, the whole idea of film is kind of like out the window and, uh, I got to get a job. So I try finance because my dad, you know, tried it, did it, almost got killed, <laughs> uh, sucked. <laughs> uh, realized this is, there's you know, a I, go right about, yeah, I mean, I did also when I, uh, during the time when I met Sal, I was wanted to get back into film. So, you know, so badly I got, you know, Final Cut Pro. I worked actually down here in, in, in Jersey in, as a wedding videographer in Sweet oh, 16, did all that, Jesus. did that scene for a while. Oh, wow. That was, I'm the type of person, I'm like the guy at the wedding that just doesn't get up from the chair all night. I don't dance or anything. You know, I'm listening to like 90s grunge, like on the way up, I'm listening to a <laughs> super unknown album from 1994, original CD, the last, you know, on the Garden State. Um, Soundgarden? Yeah. So, uh, I did that. I got more experience with, you know, camera stuff, you know, but, um, dabbled. Maybe I can do that for a living. That industry is, is rough too. I mean, you really have to, um, like weddings. Yeah. <laughs> you sound with br- bridezillas all day. It's crazy. They, no. Quick side note. You know what they do now? They're called, what's the abbreviation? It's called like, like same, uh, SDEs. They call them same day edits. And, oh, um, I th- used to at, do that at, at weddings. I used to do that. The, 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 uh, the wedding recap. Yeah, like oh my god, I got crazy stories about that. Oh, I, I thought that was only like in the past couple years. No, I did because, that in two thousand seven, eight. Okay, yeah, maybe that. Okay. But it's yeah, it's like, like you know what that before is before the like, end of the wedding. A same day edit. I think I could put that together. Well, with the of what? Little context, yeah, but, <laughs> context, context but, clues. Before before <laughs> well, the end of the wedding, like right day. before they cut the cake or right after, then they sit everyone down and you watch everything that happened that whole day from her getting ready, yeah. him getting ready to the reception yeah. to what you saw about an hour earlier is right. like the last thing. The way technology um, is right now, like or, that's very easy to do. Or you what, see the guy in the corner editing it like a fucking madman. Yeah, when I did it, it wasn't uh, the the P two cards. It was the fucking right, midi tapes. Taste. Oh, you got to real time. You have to yeah, go real time. time. You have to yeah. ingest as long as so you I would, film. I would bring my MacBook Pro with my Final Cut, you know, software on it. Um, you know, there was a couple different things you would do. You would you would shoot only the ceremony itself and do an edit. This was this was the this was the concept before the DJ would announce for the first time, Mister and Mrs. So and So, before they come through those doors. There's it on the big screen. There'll be a, a recap of the entire wedding ceremony, like shots of the ring going on the finger. This and that yeah, all these yeah, dissolves yeah. and transitions and all this. So shit. many slide shots. It's yeah, crazy <laughs> so shit. I did that. And then the star last, wipe. Yeah. And then the last shot is them like walking out of the church, and then the doors open at the same time in real life, and it's them coming into the hall like they just came from the church. Oh, I see. I can't tell you the anxiety that I got doing these things. It, yeah, not man. one time it, uh, was there ever a mistake, but I had a couple of close calls where the DV, DV wouldn't like author to the- Yeah, the, or what if like, a, what what if your idea. computer crashes? Oh, like that's oh, dude, risky, you know, that's man. Crazy. And then you go to these, uh, to edit, I would race down to the, to the catering halls and get there and the, the room's not even set up and try to convince the maitre d'. I'm like, listen, I'm with this wedding party. I just need like an outlet 
and a table or mo- half the time I'm sitting on the floor with wires hanging out, you know, capturing, vi- oh, you know, geez. video in real time, whatever, yeah. putting the shit together for the DJ. And it, it was, ve- it was a lot of anxiety. Terrifying. <laughs> but that was the thing, like, like <laughs> weddings back in the day, you'd, you'd get your wedding video and be like the whole ceremony. Like, this is great. You get five minutes, like literally the, 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 the Bruno Mars song. We would do both though. We would do that. We would do the, the, the whole ceremony and Yeah, I the guess recap. they get both, but like. That, like just to one song basically like the whole Bruno Mars song like I think I want to marry you they'll have your entire day in that song I had my perfect. go-to songs it was the same <laughs> shit like I made a million videos Sweet Sixteens uh, the recap montage at the end Time of Your Life Green Day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anybody who grew up in South Jersey in, in, in sweet, sweet Sixteen that has that as a montage I was the guy who shot it <laughs> <Redondo>. <laughs> I love it <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there no. It is. And there it is. You're just waiting for it to happen. I can't wait. I'm excited. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah. What, you want to intro this? I love when people know what No, it is. I don't want to. I know ah, it's top or bottom. It is top or bottom. Yeah. But, man, how lucky am I? Every podcast that I'm a fan of, tell them Steve, Dave, What Say You, PBR, I get to be on it. And that is pretty I'm like cool. a super fan. It's great. Yeah, right? yeah but you're like a, you're like a super I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Z-list uh, <laughs> you're a podcast, celebrity. You're a podcast celebrity. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Yet he won't have us on Acknowledge. Yeah, well, Maybe. You we'll, know what we'll, mean? I'll re-up it. You know, you guys, if I do it again, you guys will get the episode. Maybe one first, day he'll we'll welcome back. One, I think Absolutely. we should do it right after this. We'll Absolutely. roll right into Acknowledge. <laughs> I might, yeah, it might not be bad. Well, this is a game we like to play. It's called Top or Bottom. I'm going to give you two topics. It's based on you, Crystal Dondo. Oh, boy. We're, we're going to round table it. You're going to tell me which one is on top, which one is on bottom. Unfortunately, Dennis is sitting in, so we'll let him chime in too. Thank get you. It. You get out of game plays. Don't screw it up. I won't. Number one, top or bottom, fruits or vegetables? Uh, fruit is a power bottom and uh, <laughs> vegetables on top. A power bottom? Oh, yeah. Why is fruit a power bottom? I mean, well, it's a fruit. Okay. Nothing? Nobody? All right. I got it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, hey. Sometimes hey. driving the ship, you get, you get lost at sea. <laughs> Dennis. I want to put vegetables on top. Yeah. And fruits are the sloppy party bottom. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I like them both a lot, but yeah, I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah, I probably actually I eat more vegetables than I do fruit, so I'll put vegetables on top, fruit on the bottom. I'm gonna put fruit way on top. I love fruit. I love I just fruit. had a delicious well, nectarine it, today. Oh, after I love after it. that selfie in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> No, but Mute. think about it. <laughs> it's a Ladondolous episode from here on out. You may love, I love fruit, and you love fruit, but do you eat fruit more than you eat vegetables? Uh, I eat a lot of fruit, man. Oh, really? Uh, but vegetable, not, probably no, vegetables are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, no, but fruit, fruit is more accessible, though. You know, yeah. you don't have yeah. to cook it or anything. You can, you know. Well, did you know that if you, when you, you throw a head of broccoli into boiling water, it screams? Yes. Yes, vegetables have feelings. Top vegetables or bottom, have feelings. number two, <laughs> on-air talent or podcast producer. Uh, top podcast producer, bottom on air talent. E- ergo, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, you, you have no confidence? I have no, none when it comes to on air stuff. Now, why do you have no confidence, man? Like I, I, I have confidence. I know that I can do things. Story. Thank. Yeah, but you know, anybody can tell a story, right? I can tell by the no. way you hold your phone when you periscope that you're like you're so. You want to be doing it, but like you're uncomfortable. I'm just doing like, it? you know what it is? It's uh, it's if I'm doing it at lunch at work and I'm at work. <laughs> and, <laughs> so and you, it's like I got to do this for you know for you, like I got to be engaged in into the you know the podcast like fans. I'm kind of like the ambassador for Quinn and Sal. Yeah. So I got to like be out there and stuff. So I tw- you know I tweet on 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 their Twitter account and answer the emails whatever. So I'm. I'm d- it's a nine to five, and you you you, cl- <laughs> you clearly have a dentist type person in the background, the guy that you work oh, with, yeah, my and you, Chris, <laughs> who, who's not funny, and it's funny that he's not funny. Chris, I just follow. He's you a stand up comedian. Oh, cool! I just followed you on I'm Periscope. Follow you back. Twitter love right here, Dennis. No, no, on Periscope. On, Periscope. on air talent or podcast? Producer. On air talent on top. Yeah, really? Yeah, I'd love being on this mic. You I produce know. nothing. You, I you produce got a great nothing. voice. Thank you. Great voice. <laughs> I gave him that little Zoom microphone. For those people listening, again, you can go to our Patreon. I put up a whole episode of behind the scenes of Impractical Joker Crew. I, if you read what I wrote there, I gave Dennis the intern that microphone to go do some rants a year ago. I got not one <laughs> rant, so up. I took it back and I put good work, put it to good work. Thank you, Derek D. Do we even have to ask? Uh, yeah, I know, right? What have you <laughs> on air talent on top? <laughs> Podcast uh, producer, and I'm following Chris Lodano on Twitter right now. I too. followed you back, bro. 
Twitter now too. Oh, Twitter. Twitter yeah, and Periscope. Awesome. Chris, I've been following you for a while. Cool. <laughs> no, no, really. He's been in the shadows. Yeah. Lurking I'm going to follow you back. I got to see because I, I have you know you so are. many Twitter uh. followers. Actually, I don't. I too will put on air talent on top. Yeah. It's, it's, just, you know why? I'll, for one reason, it's, you're going to laugh at me when I say this. It's so much easier. It's so much, it's so, not easier. It's so, so much less work. I don't know. You got like Darth Vader's <laughs> chest right in front uh, of you, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, Look, like, you see what I'm? If, like, if you watch the videos, I I was watching. I, Are I you did, talking strictly about podcasting? I, in general, man, I I've, I've really? worked on a lot of different things. I've uh -huh. been on in front and I've been behind on many levels of production. If you watch these YouTube videos of this podcast, I look like a crackhead. I'm always I have to be touching something all the time to keep this technology flowing right. Oh yeah. What you do you do? You sit there and talk, make, right? But yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> but. I mean, I'm, so in, in other venues, yeah. I don't, I don't know, man. You know, it's, it's I think it, the performer, it's all on them. You're, who are you, who are you, filming? It's less, <laughs> it's less work. It might not be less or more difficult. Maybe less physical work. Uh, I don't know. I might have to agree to disagree. Well, hey, it's that's it's top or bottom, man. <laughs> well, you do it very it. well. You do it very well. Number three, top or bottom. Nuggets. I wasn't saying you're not good at what you do in the. I'm not saying you weren't a bad producer. <laughs> I'm, I was just saying. I get what you're saying. Okay. I was saying that you're a terrible talent. But no, I'm no, going to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Top or bottom, number three, Nugget or Dennis, the intern. Oh, I got to go with, I'm sorry, Dennis, but you're going to get slammed, power bottomed. <laughs> and uh, my <laughs> Nugget, what say you? <laughs> you're going to get slammed, power bottomed. <laughs> I don't want to be slammed power bottom. Nothing. I don't think everybody, any nobody ever used power bottom as a bottom on the show, right? <laughs> no, I'm so proud. I was for a long time. I'm like, oh, if I ever get on that show, I'm gonna say power bottom. You're in. <laughs> nugget, nugget like power bottom. <laughs> nugget wants to hurt your bottom. Dennis, uh, no, that definitely Dennis on top. Whereas Dennis is a, a bit of a pain in the ass. Nugget is straight up evil. Yeah, e evil. I agree. He's evil. Uh, for the sake of who needs to be raped, it's you. He was. <laughs> <laughs> is it my outfit? Is it my fault? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was I making eyes? <laughs> Derek. I mean, I, I don't I don't know Nugget personally, and uh, I, I unfortunately I know Dennis personally. Uh, no offense, You're Dennis, but all offense to uh, mean it meant. Um, <laughs> you you have met Nugget. He sat in that chair. Jiggy. Oh yeah. And so. <laughs> Never mind. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like a, he, a real, real in nuggets. Oh, okay. So, but a shitty one. So Dennis on top. Nugget. Yeah. I think All we've right. kind of put Dennis uh, in this game before, and like anything, you can throw any, say anything right now uh, versus Dennis. Anything. I'll come up with a top or bottom. You just throw any. Oh other, man. I blank guess. or Dennis. Right. Oh, okay. Dennis um, on bottom. Quinoa or De Dennis. Dennis on bottom. <laughs> quinoa on top. There you go. Right. I told you. I, I'm, I'm leaving this room. All you guys become vegan. Baby genocide. Steak or Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Put steak on top. I'll take steak and genocide. Over Dennis. Yes. You're going to take baby genocide over Dennis. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're just better what that's you do. Awful. That's where I draw the line. That's baby, it, though. Baby genocide? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> top or bottom, number four. Let me take a selfie, or can I take that? Or can you take this picture for me? Okay, so <laughs> uh, top, you know, thrusting top. Uh, <laughs> let me take that, that, that picture for you, and bottom is, you know. Let me take so, a selfie. Yeah, take a selfie. <laughs> Smoking like a real man. <laughs> I'm going to say, on top, it's let me take a picture from the top rope <laughs> into the gaping ass that is let me take a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow, he's a gape. Yeah. Gapes, uh, bro. I'm Listen, a, go, go ahead. Answer this question. Go I, ahead. I am. Go ahead. <laughs> let me take a selfie <laughs> on bottom. What? And <laughs> Why? Because I don't take that many selfies. Okay. Keep keep talking. I don't take that many selfies. If you just watch the YouTube video, I just who's holding who's holding <laughs> who's the pic the camera in this picture? Uh, excuse no, me. No, but you have the Milana, opportunity. Milana, Joe, oh, Milana. God, Mike, can you guys all get in this? Let me take a selfie real quick. <laughs> right after I took that, Joe but right. Mike goes, yo, yo, good idea. Make sure you send me that right away. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the difference is... Did somebody offer Derek to right. take yeah, the picture? We had, yeah, we had our, our producer was there. Frankie was in, in house. Did Frankie say, let me take the picture? Yeah. And no. then Derek And then said, if you look at the picture, Derek put himself so much more in the picture. Well, almost cropped me out. Yeah. I did not. He, like, you could see it on our on it, our Instagram. It was just quick, it, man. I, I mean, do it quick. I think Derek did it to, you know, to get side boob. I mean, you know. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Those were nice boobs. Yeah, did you, did you, if you followed that episode, you'll High see five uh, it on a side lot boob. of side boob. Derek's hashtags in his tweets were ridiculous. Let's bring side boob talking about? I said, like, cute chick or something. I say, let me take a selfie as well. She's pretty funny, that girl. She's, she's funny. unbelievable. She seems man. really cool. Uh, she's great. The episode was great, and everybody should watch Other Space on Yahoo. 
Um, go check that Yahoo. out. Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. Yahoo. Why say Yahoo weird? You say Yahoo. You do. You Yahoo. Say, Yahoo. Say, say balsamic. The vinegar that you balsamic put. Balsamic vinaigrette. It's not. It's balsamic. It's balsamic. Balsamic. And Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. You Yahoo. <laughs> Number five, top or bottom, acknowledge with Chris Ladondo or what say you pod? Uh, you know, unfortunately, acknowledge is going to... Uh, um, Double dildo in the asshole. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> gonna make acknowledge airtight. You're gonna get All holes. <laughs> All acknowledge is gonna be. Frank is looking at us like, oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, acknowledge uh, pa- I- Megatron bottom. <laughs> and uh, what say you, number top? Because I gotta support my friends. You know, sometimes you gotta take a dick. <laughs> or two. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, double Dennis the intern. <laughs> yeah, just I'm getting that image out of my head. Um, what say you on top, respectfully whispering into the ear <laughs> of acknowledge with Chris Ladano. Dennis is the nicest guy in the world. I think <laughs> Dennis you. is the Chris of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis is definitely a power bottom. Derek D. So am I. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> High five. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I think we made a <laughs> love connection. You know what? I've never met personally... Uh, Brian Quinn or Sal Volcano. Really? You never met those guys? Not that, he not hasn't, yet. yeah. Um, and I have met Chris Lodondo, so Chris Lodondo on top. What's yeah. he on bottom? Thanks, Dan. This, yeah. Derek D. You, uh, see what he just did there? Derek D. I am, oh, oh, I almost called you Dennis. Oh, I almost Dennis. Oh, I almost Dennis. Dennis. Yeah, uh, Derek it's both D's, but D's. people have done it before. I got to put uh, what say you on top. It's Chris Lodondo now. Oh! <laughs> he, he won't even have yeah. me on Acknowledge. Watch out for Until that you pun. have me on Acknowledge. The resurrection right? of Acknowledge will feature the PBR guys. Like, on you, you know, well, I guess happens. I meant Nugget, but that was it. So, Yeah. Well, no, the, the voice How long is this song? Jesus Christ. It's, it's instrumental. A, this is it, great. Yeah, we don't mess around, man. It's a professional. This is amazing. Uh, you know what I mean? It's this very thing is produced. It is. It's a forever loop. Right. So, since we're talking about what say you pod and producing, let talk to us a little bit about your uh, your. Your production the duties? duties or your producer It's duties. really, I mean, it's not a traditional type of role like Frank has here. Where, you know, I got an email uh, from uh, you guys and it was like an intake form. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, of, right. that's great. That's the way it should be. Um, uh, setting up guests. I don't set up the guests. Uh, so b- before you get into actually your dues of it, let's talk about how, uh, how it all went down. So, Quinn... And be careful because... Right before you became the producer of What's a U Pod, somebody wanted in this Frank, room. Frank, <laughs> Frank was wanted to reach out because. Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Frank's kind of mad. Anyway, uh, go on. Well, Frank. Awkward. <laughs> Frank would certainly be better at it. Um, they, you know, Quinn and Sal had the podcast, and then a couple of times they referenced on the show that they needed help, and. Um, I had you know reached out to them. I you know I said, hey guys, if you really need any help, you know. I can help you out. Whatever you need, let me know. Since, you know, having that experience working with them for years, doing sketches and this, that, I was kind of like the go-to person uh, if they need anything. And uh, they reached out and I was like, oh shit. And uh, we had a conference, got to schedule for the first time a conference call with them. Um, they were both they in separate cars. You? Well, we were talking. It wasn't like, because like Quinn lives, like, like, and we live in the same neighborhood and Sal lives at, you know, a different part of uh, the island. And I don't see them anymore. So this is something that in the past would be, oh, meet up at so-and-so and and we'll talk about it. Now there's such a big time at the schedule, (laughs) a conference call with them, Mm -hmm. you know, and they were in two separate cars, like on, you know, you know, uh, you thought you were were getting big timed. Well, whatever. I mean, this is how it is now. And we were just talking about what the roles would be, what they want, what they wanted uh, me to do. They wanted to redo the website. Uh, so there is, which hasn't been done. It has been done. It just hasn't got the okay to 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 flip the switch. Basically, um, they wanted uh, what else? They want. They wanted me to take over the Twitter and email account. Do that. Read a lot, all the emails. I read. I put in folders certain things. You get a lot of fan art. So I did a lot of stuff like that. Then odds and ends stuff like the whole Fast and the Furious thing with mm-hmm. Universal Pictures. That was the that was something that when that happened, I was like. Now's my chance to do something really cool, uh, because the role is so, you know, with them their 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 schedule. Like, you know, you work with you work with them, uh, plus they're touring to get them to. Okay, guys, you guys are gonna do a, a show on this week, whatever. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. That's what Frank probably does with you guys. Mm-hmm. Wait, so uh, fa- backtrack a second. Fast and Furious. They got in touch with you to talk about it on the show. Or well, they were doing a. Marathon. Well, this is what was ha- yeah. this was going on a- about a year or so ago. 
on the podcast, they were talking about they were, Paul Walker had just died. Yeah, and they were saying how um, they years before they were famous, they met Paul Walker in they saw him in Times Square, and they were talking for a while. And he was a really nice guy to them, and they, they were you know just explaining that and. You know, out of respect, they said, "You know, what we're going to do. We're going to do a marathon of all the Fast and the Furious movies." And they know, like, what they're getting themselves into. Those movies are kind of over the top. And they were going to do a, a marathon of those films, and maybe do something with with the, the the audience, or maybe just do an audio commentary of all the episodes. So yeah. they started doing that. Yeah, it was and good stuff. It, yeah, it yeah. was on it was, what say you? On what say you? Yeah, they ended you, up doing like they would watch, and then they would say, "Okay, you know, we're at minute forty five, so right. stop what you're doing, watch until minute forty five. Oh, I see. And then you would play it again. So it was almost like a simulcast. Oh, that's a cool thing. Yeah. It was it was cool. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, and Universal got wind of this. So somebody at Universal who is in charge of the um, uh, the marketing of like the premieres of the whole like East Coast is a fan of theirs and is a fan of Tell Him Steve Dave and um, had said uh, reached out to to me and uh, Declan uh, Quinn who does uh, the audio uh, work for What Say You. And, and would tell him Steve Dave, they said, what was that? Uh, <laughs> they said, uh, you know, would you guys be interested in uh, attending a premiere of uh, Fast 7? But how about let's do something with your listeners. We can make it a contest where they can watch the film with you in the theater. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I brought that back to the guys and they're like, yeah, fuck yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We just had to schedule it around, and you it was, know, with it was everything. Cool too, because at the time when I remember when, uh, when Quinn and Sal made that announcement, they hadn't finished watching all of them. Right. They were only on like fast three, something like that. And it was pretty cool that universal was going to take this chance because, you know, they, they were pretty fair. You know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. some stuff they would come back and Sal would be like, I don't know what the hell I just watched. Yeah. yeah I, was, and then they'd be honest. like, okay, we're back in. Let me tell you how crazy. And it's, it's funny because they took the chance on making, letting these people come and do their, you know, at the premiere. And really they could have, it could have blown up in their faces. Right. If Sal and, and, and Quinn were like, exactly. this movie sucks. So that was one of the, the, the things that are like, we want, if we're going to do this, if they're going to do this, it's okay that we'd be completely honest and universal. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, they were going to make their money regardless. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> like it, like it matter. Uh, so we, myself and, uh, uh, Pat from universal, great guy, um, kind of coordinated this thing between, um, you know, what say you and Universal try to, you know, pick out the right theater. Uh, they set up a private email for the listeners and people like, you know, would send uh, their their information and we were going to randomly pick whatever it was, 100 or so people and blah, blah, blah. And um, it happened and it was this an amazing, it was an amazing event. Uh, the movie, you know, it, it was fun. Sal and Quinn with the audience. Uh it was a huge hit. Universal loved the whole idea to the point where people on the other side of the coast, I heard, wanted to start recruiting other comedians to do uh, the same thing. Oh, with wow. Other movies oh, wow. in the franchise. Um, and that night, we also they did a, a a live podcast at the Gotham Comedy Club. It was just an amazing night, and Universal was so happy that uh, we uh, every now and then we get invited to uh, premiere parties and nice. things like that. Nice. And you put the whole thing together. Uh, well, Universal did all the heavy lifting. I did. I was the liaison for. Where was the theater? It was the uh, AMC at Thirty um, Fourth uh, Street. Oh, now okay. is there a way yeah. that you can get Sal and Quinn to do the Marvel Cinematic Universe leading up to the new Avengers? That would movie? be awesome because that, that would be Dennis, Dennis would like to be involved in that. In yeah, some way. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'm I a could Disney recite fan. most yeah. of those movies. <laughs> um, <laughs> And what was and the power of the podcast? Uh, never have I experienced this. Uh, going to the theater, meeting up with uh, you know their uh, you know Sal and Quinn and you know their people in the lobby, people screaming, "Ladondo, whatever, <laughs> come here, take, I gotta take a picture." I'm taking pictures with people, and people. <laughs> one one couple came up to me, husband and wife. They came from I think Rhode Island. And they had, uh, they're like, can you sign um, our picture? I'm saying to myself, what picture are they going to have? Like, I didn't do any press shots for what's at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shots. And they, they pull out, like, a, a like an 8 by 10 picture of me. Like, it was, like, my profile picture. And it was a picture of Sal, like, if you're familiar with the um, I Have Your Pants. Yeah, yeah. Those pictures that yeah. he put up. Like, a collage and, like, me. And, like, I 
autographed a picture of myself. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Like I'm taking pictures with kids and stuff. It's really, it's really nice. Yeah, that's cool. So, so people are cool. This has been about a year now. You've been producing them, right? Uh, this December, well, since December. And you've no, I mean, you've it's exploded for you. Well, it, it exploded. I mean, one of the goals I had was I wanted to get their Twitter followership up because they never tweeted from the from this account, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it was at like forty or so thousand people when it started and now it's at around almost 72,000 uh my goal is to get a hundred thousand for them so that's happening it's what is the twitter account it's at it's at what say you pod i think this is only the right time to throw eggs at at what say say you you pod pod and follow them as well so all the pbr posse if you're listening to this anybody out there listening to this go on your twitter right now and let's throw some eggs at the what say you people right it's not a bad thing and i'll get these notifications whenever this airs so i'll be like in the ferry terminal somewhere and just seeing eggs <laughs> eggs fuck am i getting all these I mean, eggs we've thrown eggs at you before uh, yeah yeah Me right too. It's, it's done in love we it's get done in love sure, right sure, so sure. at what say you pod hashtag eggs, eggs. <laughs> so what's next for for your producing i have what, no what, idea you have nothing oh in yeah, yeah actually we do um I, well, we're trying to get Samantha Fox to come on the show. Yes. She reached Yeah. <laughs> she reached out? She, uh, Quinn did something and he tagged her. And, he did and a bunch whatever. of something when he was a kid. Yeah. Well, we all did <laughs> to that same poster. And uh, she wound up following me, him, and Sal and going back and forth. And then I got in touch with her manager and we were going back and forth trying to schedule her to be on the show. But she was going to be in New Jersey. I think she was going to be in Parsippany at the Sheraton. There was some kind of event going on there, and we were going to try to, you know, meet up with her there. Uh, but then it got canceled. So we're we're, we're keeping her on the back burner. But uh, I'm trying to do something with Universal right now that I can't say. That has to do with movie franchise. Hopefully it happens. I don't think it will, you know. But if it does, it'll be really cool. So we still have that Universal. Uh, Still have that relationship with Universal Pictures, so it'll definitely be other projects in the future with what's so you got Universal. stuff you got stuff in the hopper. This thing's good, yeah, a little little bit. It's just difficult with their touring schedule, and you know, I, they don't get back to me right away anymore. Like I'll be texting Quinn, like I need an answer on something, whatever, and then like he doesn't get back to me, and then I see like he's in fucking taking pictures with Vince Vaughn, <laughs> like yeah, during comedy. the same time. I'm like, oh, Wild all right, comedy, right? <laughs> yeah, Wild yeah. West comedy. So, Another thing that's good about what say you too. I mean, you have fifty percent of the Jokers. You know, with, right. uh, on that podcast, which is uh, just, fifty, you know, <laughs> half of the uh, the the right. funny is still one hundred percent hilarious, right? And PBR well, only has twenty five percent of the other fifty percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Only fifteen percent of the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm not a math major, but does that, does that math work? But we're still in it. You know, <laughs> no, 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 wait, you got Jesse Pinkman, you got Donald Trump, you got Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's true. It's true. <laughs> Did, are you going to vote for Don? Uh, absolutely not. Don, you hear this? The Don does not. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Yes, I'm you so do. excited, Don. I gotta tell Donald you. Trump. I'm pretty pissed about it. Do you have any questions for Don while he's here? Uh, no. Fuck I mean, what do you really? I, no, I, the no, guy says I can't no. say. The, I'm the a improv listen. talent of Latondo. Yeah, well, I know. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> You're a Ladumbo. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Ladumbo. <laughs> tell, uh, tell him, Don. He can't work for you. He can't work. <laughs> Pip, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was waiting. For, yes. All right. I mean, uh, do you have any questions for the other people that are running for office? You know, uh, Schwarzenegger's back Sw- in the race. Yeah, Schwarzenegger. Did, did you did you hear about um, his? Uh, he pardoned some some. I don't. Uh, you don't. Don't ask me. He's right here. D- I didn't. Even, I'm sorry. I didn't what happened, Arnold? Arnold? Well, I got to tell you, uh, I pardoned the chicken because uh, <laughs> I ate him. Uh, <laughs> well, you ate well, him. You ate him. I thought you were a vegan. No. Uh, no. no. It's vegan. Protein. Are, Those muscles do not come from a vegan. If you are vegan. Oh, I, I beg to differ. If you I are can. vegan, you need to be punched in the head <laughs> immediately multiple times with a 9 millimeter bullet. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't. I'm so you, know, you know who else is a, is a vegan is, is Jesse Pinkman's a, a vegan as well. Yeah, cra- yeah, but he's a meth head too. Well, <laughs> that's why. Yo, I just, yo, I cut back on the drugs. Yo, me and Mr. White, we just selling them, bitch. I'm eating, I'm eating mad pizza, bro. <laughs> Jesse. Well, there's, there's, there's no, pizza, pizza. Be soy cheese, not right. cheese. Yo, not yo, the sausage on it. <laughs> Suck my dick. Whoa. There's no, there's no awesome. meat and meth. Jesse right? Pinkman. Oh, there's no meat and meth. There's no Jesse, meat and you're meth. a jerk. Getting now, back to muscles. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Please. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Hugh Jackman. I mentioned this. I knew you were going to bring this up. Yeah. Well, look at me. I'm 15 pounds overweight. I can lose weight. Uh, what, what do you call <laughs> Go. <laughs> How do vegans for vegan? <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll, tell, no, wait, wait, I'll get back to. I'll get back yeah. to. No, I, I, very easily. Because um, your body's storing fat. because no, it's so hungry. No, there's no fat. Not eating food. No, there's no fat. It's. Uh, I eat a lot of quinoa grain. 
like the super like if you are a bodybuilder eat quinoa it's, it's mad protein crazy protein but it's also carb so i eat all that stuff don't exercise so anyway uh hugh jackman supposedly during the x-men origins movie when he, when he comes out of the you know oh, the Annie, he was on a vegan diet yeah, because that he was one. because he was on steroids, ate a lot of meat, and then cut it all out. Yeah, he was a just a vegetable. <laughs> I don't think he was on <laughs> steroids. Sucked it all no, out. No, he, no. What he did do, I he, heard. You he, got the trainers and everything he has too. I, mean, yeah, I heard he didn't drink. There was one scene before a big like scene. He didn't drink any liquids for twenty four hours. Oh, he that'll dehydrated. suck it out of you. That's man. crazy. Very dangerous. That's very wrestlers dangerous. do that. People that fight in the UFC, they do it all the time. Yeah, Christian Bale was on a vegan diet when he made The Machinist. So <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Ladondo, you. I was talking about this before. You remind me so much. Your Cadence reminds me so much of a, of a comedian, man. Oh boy! Uh, and what, who did you think it was before? No, I was thinking um, Richard Lewis. Richard, Richard Lewis. Lewis. Oh, De Dennis, who did you say? Before? I said it was Richard Klein. No, yeah, Richard. Klein. What, what about even like David Klein? But we all it was Richard Lewis, I guess. I, I think the, I think the guy that you're he's re that he reminds me of is Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright, yeah. Like, no. is K, can you just say K Billy Super Sounds of the seventies? This is Kate Billy Super Sounds in the 70s. Yeah, that's do it. me a favor. Do me a favor. Read that top line. <laughs> just, read, just read the top <laughs> line. Wait, wait. All right. <laughs> I was driving down the street past the... Like in that no, voice? No, I want you just to read it. You're Chris Lodano. Just read it. I was driving down the street past the gas station. There were two signs in the window. Help wanted, self-service. So I went in and hired myself. <laughs> I was driving down the street past the gas station. There were two signs in the window. Help wanted. Oh, wow. Service. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So I went in and hired myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, tell me that. That's awesome. Uh, How did you pull it up so quick? <laughs> I'm, I'm a magician. So That's amazing. So tell me, give me that. So tell me that he this doesn't remind you. No, no, no. No, before when you said yeah. it at the beginning, at the top of the show, I did think that There's Stephen Wright did Stephen come to Wright. mind without any of me knowing knowledge of... But you, I don't look like Stephen Wright. No. I didn't say it. You know, your cadence Jesus is Christ. very much your like Your cadence him. is similar to him. So how about we play a game? For a second, I thought maybe Mitch Hedberg, but no. You want to play a game? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, this game is going to be called Who Said It? <laughs> okay? Wait, how's it go? It's <laughs> Who Said It? <laughs> you know how our games go. <laughs> We're not playing who we be calling or what's in the box. Why can't we change up the cadence to that? I can be like, who? Who said it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. Can I'm we like, all like, do that one? Time out. Time out. Hey. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you guys want to play a game? Yeah. yeah. What's the name of that game? Ooh, oh, ooh. Yeah, God uh, damn it. Hold on. Multi see what I'm saying? Multitasking is difficult. Right. Hey, you guys want to play a game? Yeah. yeah. What's the name of that game? Who's, who who said, said it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And here's how that game is played. Uh, Chris... <clears throat> Chris Ladondo is going to read you the following statement. You're going to tell me who said it. The meat monster Chris Ladondo or the comedian Stephen Wright. <laughs> I'm going to read. I'm going to change it up a little bit because it's, uh, it's a new game, right? I'm going to read you a statement. Ladondo, you're playing this game. So uh, Derek, Dennis, and Ladondo are all going to be playing. Uh, I'm going to read you the following statement. You're going to tell me who said it. Was it the meat monster Chris Ladondo or was it the comedian Stephen Wright? You guys get how the game is played? I feel like I'm going to be awesome at this. Yeah. But yeah, I think I am too. <laughs> I would hope so. I hope so. Number one, we'll start. <laughs> we'll start with Derek and we'll end with Ladondo. Okay. Uh, uh, number one. Uh, do I, I'm not going to. I can't read it in their tone, right? You I, can't. I will. I will. No, because you have to read you it. Give it away. Listen, you give it away. Just read it. Listen up. I'm about 10 push-ups away from Hugh Jackman's chest. Derek D. That was Chris Ladondo. Dennis the intern? Chris Ladondo. Chris Ladondo? That was Chris Ladondo. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Number two. 10 push-ups. I went to a general <laughs> store. They wouldn't let me buy anything specifically. <laughs> that's Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. <laughs> that's right. Number, that's, that's correct. Number three. Some grimace at the shrieking sound. Some grimace at the shrieking sound of a train pulling into a subway station. Others realize it's a perfect fart opportunity. Ooh, I'm gonna go Ladondo. Dennis the intern. Ladondo Calrissian. Ladondo. Ladondo. That ah. was, that's a pretty good one. Too. I sure that these are, I, stole, I stole all these from his Twitter. Just okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Uh, number four. <laughs> I intend to live forever. So far, so good. <laughs> That's Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Right. <laughs> so far, you're four for four. Number five. I stayed in a really old hotel last night. They sent me a wake-up letter. That's Stephen uh, Wright. Ladondo. Stephen Wright. 
It is Stephen Wright, oh, Tennessee. It's Dennis! Dennis! Wrong. You Dennis. suck. Uh, Ghost Adventures produce. <coughs> sorry. Ghost Adventures producers are the hardest working people in showbiz. Slamming doors, making sounds, moving chairs, etc. Very tiring. That's Ladondo. Ladondo. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you have to think about it. <laughs> Number seven. You can't have everything. Where would you put it? That's Stephen Wright. <laughs> Stephen. That's right. Because he, he, Stephen Wright does all that, like, oh, let me think about it. He makes I know, but Ladondo's tweets are very similar. Yeah, right? That one was. The one definitely was. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight. To steal ideas from one person is pilgr- uh, it's plagiarism. To steal from many is research. Um... That's a tough one. A st- I, I'm gonna go Stephen. I'm gonna, uh, Stephen Wright, I guess. Ladondo. It's Stephen Wright, but the, the <laughs> education background would make yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the final one. It's not one of his zingers. Mm. My IMDb page needs some more credits. Who needs me? Who needs me? Uh, that's Ladondo. Stephen Wright. Of course it's me. I have them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the first time we've ever yeah. played. Who you said it. <laughs> really? Who, who said, said it? <laughs> what do you think? New game. That, that was pretty kind of fell flat. No, I think it's good. You do have a very Stephen Wright cadence. No, I think. Does that mean I get a job as a comedy writer <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't say you were fun. No, this oh, is a good yeah, game, yeah. though. That's, that's true. We could do that with like you, any of us, or guests. That's, that can work. It, the, you know, it, the it, the best would be is if you, he didn't, Ladano got some wrong. <laughs> if he got his own wrong. <laughs> you know I mean? That's the goal, I think, to get the person I, I, I just want to say I monitor my Twitter account very closely. Do you really? You also Nothing, write nobody? it. No? <laughs> I know. All right. Wait, was that a joke? <laughs> <laughs> I got the bell. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I don't either. Um, so what's next? I guess, I guess <laughs> yeah. if you have to explain a joke, it's not funny. Dennis knows. What's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> we're we're switching it up. Sound? We're switching it up. Dennis, you haven't been here in a minute, so we are switching up the armchair futurist. Okay. We are guessing, because it's been coming out lately, that every time we do the armchair fu- futurist and we play that sound, people we end up talking about people's AOL instant messenger yeah. screen names. So before we ask Ladondo what his <clears throat> is, or was, we're going to guess what it was. Anybody want to take a guess at it? Um, should I wait? Should I give you guys hints first of not, like when I first had it? Like, no, we know when you had it. It was in the late eighties, early nineties. Okay, it definitely wasn't the late eighties. <laughs> wasn't the late eighties, mid nineties, right, whatever. Yeah, yeah mid what a prodigy, maybe in like ninety five. Comp right? you serve. Yeah, <laughs> this would be a yeah. really cool if this was his, but it's not. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Like Ladon Bro twenty nine <laughs> or something. Ladon Bro. No. no, it wasn't it. No. Dennis, Dennis, you have one. I want to go about Ladondo Calrissian because he's sitting here with oh, like, a like close, like shirt on. close, like close. Close to the, should I say? No, no, I, I think yeah. it was probably like, it was probably, he had a long one. It was like South Shore Tender Hugger. Not well, at you're, all. Uh, you, uh, you're a big like, Star Wars fan? Didn't yeah. Know. Hence oh. the shirt. I know. I was, what yeah, do you I, think? Love it. Yeah. What was your AOL instant messenger screen name? This was Kenobi77. Oh! <laughs> I was pretty close. Oh my yes. God, Dennis, close. Almost, I mean, you almost nailed I it. I nailed it. I'm going to yeah. say I was genre specific. I, yeah. I, I'm going to put that in the W column for Dennis. Definitely. And I love how I you agree. try, Ladonna, you try to play it off like maybe it was that. Maybe it was exactly Kenobi. that. <laughs> what was it again? Kenobi? Kenobi 77. So the years, so that means there were, were born. 76 other oh, Kenobis. Yeah. <laughs> right. So not Ladon, bro. <laughs> no. No. Ladon, bro. Ladon, no. <laughs> Again, got that in twice. All right. Uh, so you were... <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. You're a huge uh, Star Wars fan. We get it. You were born in 77. That's how yep. it works. The year came Dennis, out. Wh- Dennis, what was yours, man? Oh, man. I think... Don't act like you don't know. I think it was Mr. Blonde. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what? Pretty cool. Yeah, I was a fan of uh, Reservoir Dogs. Me too. So when's That's the last time you heard that sound of that 56K dial-up modem? Well, sometimes I hear it when I when I call uh, at work a number and it's a fax machine line. It's the same yeah. number. So uh, you get angry when you dial the yeah, fax number. Yeah. So I would say a few months ago. What kind of memories does it bring up for you? Uh, that, you could say it. Download that porn picture. That would uh, I didn't want to say that. Um, <laughs> oh my god! It's like ten minutes to get to tits. <laughs> yeah. Um, then you print it out. That was me. That was just super <laughs> sharing, scary. Print sharing it out. Okay, how would you to keep it? Londano's going to be like, well, 
on that day we were talking about earlier, I was using a dial-up modem. We're gonna get full. We're gonna get back to that. Oh man, boo! Dial-up <laughs> memory. Uh. Body less age, sex, location. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, men who look like Kenny Rogers dot com. You ever see that website? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it, that's what that's it brings what reminds back me. To you? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it was hysterical. Oh, and like a uh, mullet junkie and mullet hunter. Those I sites. remember mullet hunter. They were amazing. What? A, <laughs> do you remember that cartoon? It was like pick your own adventure, but it was like it was Jake, and you had to get him laid. No. And he'd be like, man. oh. No. Oh come on! It was great. It was remember, choose your Suit own Larry? adventure. Is the books choose your own adventure? And it was the books and like I remember Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Um, before I ask you in, about the year twenty fifty, if you were were if you had the the ability to hang out with any cast member from Saved by the Bell, who would it be? Um, Bow Wow Wow Yippee Oh Yippeeowski. I'm in love with Kelly Kapowski. Oh, See, man, because a smart man. Yeah, that's the answers say. that we get from people in that chair were, would blow your mind. Screech is she... the weirdest one. Didn't we get a Belding once? We so got a Mr. One Belding, one of the bubble we'll touch. Hang guys. out, one of the Mr. Belding. Okay, what was it? Um, Tiffany Amber. Decent. Decent. Yeah, she, that's Kelly Kapowski. Right? Yeah, yeah. She were, She lives across the street from where I work. I never saw her though. But I know she lives in the building across the street from me. That's an interesting. Yeah, give story. me a number. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the year's 2050. Yeah. You're sitting you back in a recliner. so much easier. What does your industry look like in 2050? My industry? Uh, okay, so well, that's my day call, job is, is well, let's education. Call, yeah, let's call well, You can go on whatever you want, but let's call it, you know, producing podcasts. Um, what do you think it looks like in 2050? If you want to talk about education, we can do that too. Put everybody right to sleep. Right, that's true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, all right, let's talk about podcasting. Uh, I guess like with radio, you know, you had radio before film, right? And then eventually it went into satellite radio and then podcasts, which were like two minutes long. And now podcasts are like beating out satellite radio. Uh, it's probably some kind of hologram thing or whatever. Everyone says that. Yeah. Everyone it's says where, it's where everyone can hologram, 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 hologram and virtual reality. Yeah. yeah. Oculus Rift. What do you, probably, yeah. What, when you say podcasts are beating out satellite radio, do you mean in, in listeners? Do you think that's true? I think in the sense of freedom, too. Uh, you can set up shop anywhere. Uh, you know, the, just being able to Skype with people anywhere around the world. Uh, whereas like with radio, that can be, you know, a little bit different, you know, difficult. Um, what else? Uh, you are the master of your destiny. You know, mm -hmm. there's no program director or things like that. Pig vomit. Nothing's right. holding you back. <laughs> Nothing's holding you back. But would you argue that pig vomit made Howard stronger? Yeah. You know what I mean? Made yeah. Yeah. I was listening to Sternology today. They, yeah, me when too. They, when, they were, when they were running <laughs> in his office and stuff. And yeah. Him. Um, yeah, that definitely made him, uh, I think that definitely made him stronger. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, what do you see, man? Do you see, do you see satellite radio? Do you see radio going away? 2050? I mean, does anyone listen to AM anymore? Dude, I mean, no. I've turned it on to try to find a game. I mean, in a even while, now, the, the fan, sometimes. I listen to the yeah. FM station. Yeah, why? Why wouldn't you, right? It's better quality. Yeah. I'll probably have some kind of cochlear implants. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, probably something's going to be biological where the, the technology comes to you like biologically, if that makes sense. Like a matrix hookup? Probably. Yeah, something like that. So I always talk about the chip behind the ear. Yeah, something. You know? We have that technology now. They do that with dogs and then pets where you can put like chip into somebody like if they get lost. Yeah, that's to find them now. Yeah. It's like yeah. well, you know. if your dog doesn't know how to sit, just download it into the dog. Now the dog can oh, that's, sit. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. <clears throat> that's crazy. I would love that. No. Cool, <laughs> <wouldn't laughs> I'm dead serious. That Engineering was... behavior? That's, yeah. that's scary. Maybe in 2050, that's what we get. That's... What are we breaking into here now? What is this, the uh, end no. credits? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, I was, thank you so much for coming out, thank man. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks Seriously. Whoa. What, 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 what is that? <laughs> what is it? My uh, friend Michelle at Pole Fitness Class. <laughs> we know what Derek does. Pole the show. Fitness. Is there anything you want to plug on the way out? Uh, please um, listen to the What Say You podcast whenever it's out, whenever that may be. Uh, Check out the tenderloins.com. You can see a lot of old sketches there. Um, check out the tenderloins uh, when Practical Jokers coming back. True TV. What is it? July fifteenth, sixteenth. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Check and, it out. I just uh, shoot it. <laughs> yeah, J July. Check them out. Go see the shows and uh, don't let something negative define who you are. Yeah, I like there it is. Like Guys, anything to plug? Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, between the sheets, it's a. Uh, 
talk show my buddy has on YouTube. He's coming up on his 100th episode. I've been on the show twice. 100th episode. It's airing already. So go check PBR out. Podcast. You can find us on the web. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Shit, I didn't say link. Say link. YouTube.com slash between the sheets. <laughs> <laughs>